everyone, Tim Stoddard here, coming to you this week from Sea Isle City, New Jersey. I'm at the Jersey Shore with my family on a vacation. And in this week's video, I am going to review and go over the different benefits of ConvertKit, Substack, and Beehive. And I'm gonna to explain to you which email marketing software you should use and for what reasons. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so the three different EMS softwares that we're gonna be looking at are ConvertKit, Substack, and Beehive. Before we get started, I have to have a full disclosure. I'm an investor in ConvertKit, so I'm a little bit biased towards that software, but I think over the course of this video, I'm gonna give like an honest assessment as to which of the EMSs have certain benefits for different reasons. This is ConvertKit. Basically, ConvertKit's the best software that you can use if the purpose of your website is to sell things. And when I say sell things, I mean sell courses, digital products, eBooks, software, even sell services. Like if you're an agency or you're selling SEO services like I do, if you're selling consulting services like I do, or if you're selling something simple like design and photography services. Uh, this website, obviously you guys know this website, this is my personal brand and I use ConvertKit for all of this. One of the great things of ConvertKit is it's flexible. So this is a footer form. This is a homepage form. In my blog posts, there is a sidebar form. And even in my lead generation form, like if somebody fills out this form, I can still import this email address into ConvertKit and put it into an automation. So I'll show you basic what my ConvertKit funnel looks like. The beauty of it is its simplicity and its flexibility. So here we go. If you go to ConvertKit and you click on automations, so here's the automation that I use. Whether it comes in from the creator network, which is another really great benefit of ConvertKit. Um, this automation is pretty new, which is why so few uh, signups came in through this. I just built this thing. And here's how it works. Regardless of how they come in, th this is basically the entry point. So if somebody signs up to a form, this is a form. And then they get tagged so I can organize my subscribers. I send them an introduction email. And then I wait three days. I remove the tag. And then I send them a pitch for Kappa. Kappa is a, a an AI writing tool that I'm a uh, investor slash partial owner in and it sends these three emails in this order um, in the time horizon that i choose and then after it goes through the sales pitch it retags them on the tim Stodd's newsletter and that way anytime i send somebody my weekly newsletter i'm sending them to the tim Stodd's tag and i'm only tagging i'm only sending it to people who like are not in the sales pitch funnel because if somebody's getting pitched on my cup of products i don't want to also have them get a newsletter at the same time and it's 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 simple i mean i hardly use any of the functionality for available to me for convertkit just because my tim Stodd's business is like it's not very sophisticated right like it's a blog it's a newsletter it's where I list my portfolio of investments and it's basically where I sell my coaching and consulting services. So if, if your agenda is to sell products, then ConvertKit is absolutely the answer. It's by far the most flexible. It's the easiest to use. It's the most customizable with forms and landing pages and, and, and all of that stuff. ConvertKit's a 10 out of 10 product. Um, the only downside to it is that when I publish my newsletter, I'd publish it on WordPress. And if it were up to me, I would just RSS feed that through so that the post gets published on WordPress and then automatically gets sent out through the email. But those, if I embed media, so if I embed a YouTube video on my WordPress post and I try to send it through via RSS, that video doesn't show up in ConvertKit. So I have to copy and paste all of my stuff and then put it into ConvertKit, which I think is kind of annoying, but it's not that big of a deal. Next is Substack. Um, I love Substack. Substack is really cool because it's very simple and they say beauty is in the simplicity, right? It's, it's just a place for you to write and publish a newsletter. So I actually have like this little kind of secret blog 
that I never tell anybody about. Um, it's just for my personal writing. And God, it's so easy to use. So one of the best examples of somebody using Substack is Pomp. Pomp writes about finance and Bitcoin. And, uh, you know, you can just see how powerful of a platform it is because uh, that's a bad example. He publishes his newsletter. He also records his newsletter via voice. So if I don't want to read this, I can just listen to it. Um, and you have the ability to post videos, right? So this video is going to show up it, when somebody checks their email as a video, as opposed to on ConvertKit. Um, it's, it's more difficult to do that the way that I want to. And it's just so simple. So the best thing about Substack straight up is that it's free. And if you just want to get started, you want to create a newsletter, you want to start online writing, even if like you want to build a business because you can build pages on Substack. So you can have like a hire me page and you can have like a forms collection page that you do through HubSpot or, or Ninja, uh, Ninja Forms or whatever. You can do that. Substack is an amazing platform and you should use it <laughs> to start out. It doesn't have marketing capabilities. If you're opening a Substack account, you're only starting a newsletter and that's it. There's no funnels, there's no automations. Um, and of course there's the membership functionality about it, which I'm not a big fan of just because I don't think that's a good business model. I think you're much better off selling your own products. And even if you want to do a membership, I recommend using Circle as opposed to using Substack's membership because you, you can do all the things on Circle that you can do on Substack plus a lot more. Um, it's a great product. I recommend you use it. Okay, last but not least is Beehive. I have a newsletter on Beehive called The Census. So something that's good about Beehive is that it's very like out of the box ready. So when you create a newsletter, it defaults looking like this. So it's basically a website that you can, you know, put links on the navigation bar and Substack has the same exact thing, really. It's just I think Beehive is a little bit higher level in terms of of the design. Um, I'll show you the back end of it so that you can just see what it looks like. And I'll, I'll tell you what I like and what I don't like about Beehive. <clears throat> so with Beehive, you can do a lot of the things that you can do with ConvertKit. In my opinion, it's just not as good and it's not as flexible because these forms aren't as customizable. You can't create individualized landing pages. Um, well, if you can, I don't know how to. And the, the, the writing experience, I don't know how to explain it. Maybe it's just because I'm so used to writing in WordPress and in ConvertKit that like the actual writing experience is just not as enjoyable to me. Like he, this is nitpicking a little bit, but I can't stand how when you write the newsletter, the title isn't at the top, right? If I'm, if I'm writing an article on Substack, like I just write the title here and then I write the subtitle and then I create the content. Like I always get confused that this is here. I don't like that all of the website and the SEO and even customizing the slugs. Like, the, like I said, this is nitpicky a little, a little bit, but if I create a title in WordPress and in Substack and even in ConvertKit, the slug automatically changes to what the title is called. And if I want to do that, I have to customize it. So it's just like a lot of little things to worry about. Um, in addition, I, I just don't know exactly what Beehive is. Is it an EMS? Is it like an email marketing software that I can use to sell products and create products and try to build a business? Or is it a newsletter software in which I'm trying to sell ad space and trying to build an audience? Like Beehive really promotes itself as a newsletter software. And if that's the case, that's great. But why on earth am I going to pay so much money to write a newsletter when I could just use Substack, which is free? And like, I personally think Substack is just so much easier to use because it's almost like Beehive is overkill for being a newsletter software because it's not an email marketing software because it doesn't have all of the, the cool gizmos and gadgets that ConvertKit has to make it an email marketing software. If it does, I can't quite figure out how to use it. 
So to summarize, look, if you want to build a business, use ConvertKit. More flexible, gives you as many options as possible, gives you the ability to make money through a newsletter, the ability to sell products. ConvertKit's the best software. Like I said, I'm an investor. So what do you want me to say? I might be a little bit biased there, but even if I weren't an investor, and frankly, before I was an investor, I still said, use ConvertKit. If you want to build a newsletter, if your agenda is just to build a newsletter and maybe even create a paid newsletter, just use Substack. There's no reason to use something more expensive or more sophisticated than Substack because you're just creating a newsletter. And that's exactly what Substack is made for. Substack doesn't try to be more than just a newsletter. Some of my favorite writers are on Substack, you know, so no opinion. This guy has an amazing Substack. I love his his Substack. And, you know, it's it's just a newsletter. It's just really, really simple. It's just a newsletter. Um, my friend Brian Clark is building his entire company on Substack. It's all about the longevity economy. I've, I've talked to you guys about it before. You know, it looks great. It's easy. It's free. And he sells his, his memberships and his, his paid newsletters through here. And then last, in my opinion, is Beehive. Um, it just doesn't make sense to me. Like Beehive started as a newsletter platform, obviously built for growth. So their main competitor was Substack. And then I think they're like trying to get into more of the email marketing software with some of the high, higher level functionality. And it's, it's just a little bit in between for me. They, they can't figure out what it is that they're doing. And so for that reason, I consider Beehive to be last in this group. With that being said, man, I love the way that the Beehive newsletter looks. I think it's very easy to read. Um, it's it's just it, it, it's good in that regard. Like it comes, it, it's out of the box as being very professional, and I like that. All right, thank you for watching this week's video. If you have any comments, please leave it in the comments below. Smash that subscribe button and ask me any questions that you want to. I always answer every single comment and every question possible. Thanks, guys. I'll talk to you next week. Peace.